Welcome back to Narrow Space. Today we're recreating the B-58 Hustler, one of my favorite aircraft for its sleek aesthetics and impressive performance. Here's some photos that I took of the real thing. You can see this aircraft at the National Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio. A product of the Cold War, the B-58 was a supersonic, high-altitude nuclear bomber developed by the Americans with its sights aimed at the Soviet Union. The Hustler remains a fast aircraft by today's standards with a top speed of Mach 2.2 despite coming into operation in 1960. It's no wonder its pilots were later recruited to fly the SR-71 Blackbird. This build was a lot of fun and it was even more fun to fly. I had a blast literally with all of these bombing runs. I do enjoy the improved explosion animations in KSP-2. And surprisingly it was pretty easy to put a bomb on target after a little practice and this recreation was easy to fly. Considering the reputation that the Hustler had for being a difficult aircraft to fly, this version handled like a charm. We weren't going for realism or anything here, mainly just replicating the aesthetics of the B-58. This was a relatively simple build to accomplish, and it should be easy enough to follow along. The craft consists of a long fuselage section, some delta wings, stabilizers, and wing-mounted engines. Later we'll construct the functional bomb payload that you saw in action earlier. If you're following this build, you'll likely have to mess with your wing sizing, angle, and placement like you see me do in this build. Your procedural wing dimensions don't have to match mine exactly, just try to replicate the shape. Usually when I'm recreating an aircraft, I'll use multiple reference photos from different angles as a source for the shapes that I want to make. I recommend you do the same. I was pleased with the look that we eventually achieved with our air intakes. Um, we'll add a circular intake soon, combine that with the shock cone, while still not perfect, I felt this replicated the Hustler engine nacelles nicely. But uh, some important things to note. Be sure to select fuel crossfeed in the parts manager on your pylons or fuel won't be able to reach your engines. Additionally, be thoughtful with your fuel distribution. Remember, ideally, you'd like your center of mass to be slightly ahead of your center of lift. To achieve this, I made most of my fuselage tanks empty, only filling two or so tanks with fuel right around our uh, center of mass. This made my craft extremely stable and easy to pilot. Here soon we'll be building our payload. Uh, the B-58 had a few different munitions it was capable of deploying. A noteworthy characteristic is that it's a bomber with no internal weapons bay. So the large fuel tank looking structure that will eventually be at the bottom of our aircraft is our mock nuclear bomb payload. Funnily enough, the Americans originally tried to claim this was a large fuel pod, but likely did not fool the Soviets or anyone for that matter. I'm adding this section later because I almost forgot to replicate the iconic tail gun as well as some minor details. So that's what you see here. Insanely, if this vehicle was traveling at Mach 2, rounds fired from this gun would actually move backwards relative to the ground since their relative velocity was slower than the aircraft's blistering supersonic speed. 
I still really liked some of the footage that I captured before adding these details, so you might notice some inconsistencies there. And to be honest, I could have went much further to replicate the craft one for one, but making a Kerbal version of the craft uh, is fun since most of the parts don't scale correctly anyway. So that was my rationale here. Next we'll do a full bombing run from the KSC to the island airfield and back. The real Hustler had a range of around 4,000 kilometers without refueling, so the 30 kilometer distance or so uh, from the airfield should be a simple hat trick. Now would be a good time to address how differently I'm using the B-58 here from its real flight profile. I'm flying this more like a World War II dive bomber than a high altitude supersonic bomber, for obvious reasons. This is a space flight sim with no targeting, so we have to go with the unguided approach. I was really happy with this contact I achieved at the island airfield since it was only my second try. I'd be really impressed if someone managed to accurately hit a target from a high altitude and supersonic speed in KSP-2. Uh, we took the easier method here because it was fun and we got some good close-up shots of the explosions. It took uh, quite some time to sift through all of my bombing run footage since I did so many. Not because shots weren't working out or were uh, difficult, but because I had so much fun using this craft. This gets me really excited for when more features are available, particularly when propellers and robotic parts are added. I also noticed this weird bug where all the windows at the airfield glitched to be purple, so we landed here and took a closer look. While we're talking about bugs, uh, most egregiously, struts are broken. On the builder screen, struts constantly disconnect themselves. Every single time I build a craft requiring struts, I encounter this issue. And it's honestly one of my greatest points of contention with the game so far. Struts and symmetry just don't get along, so some advice, uh, while the game's still broken, just add your struts last. Otherwise, you'll have to replace them if you move apart or sometimes for no reason at all. The only other bugs I encountered was with my landing gear detaching itself for no reason when deploying and just generally behaving strangely. I suspect this is because I had my gear clipped into the craft, but it was always only on the left side, not the right, so this doesn't make sense and we really should be able to clip parts anyway. I also noticed a couple times, like on my final landing, uh, the gear even completely changed directions. The rear gear flipped around backwards after I deployed them, which is a bug I have never seen before. But now that we're coming in for our final approach at the KSC, that is all I have for you guys today. Please subscribe if you enjoy my content. Technical information was sourced from the Air Force Museum and details I've learned through conversation. I hope you enjoyed this video because I had a great time making it. Please let me know if you enjoy historical recreations such as this one and any ideas for future builds in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for all the positive feedback I've received on my commentaries. I've got myself a proper microphone and planned on making many more videos for you guys.